All right, and this is turn nine, and I'm continuing to expand. Uh, here, uh, my combined expansion, or my crossbowman expansion party, uh, manages to kill a very difficult province without too much trouble. I do lose some ghosts in the process, um, but that's not super surprising given that it's a relatively difficult process, and many of the ghosts that I lose are these worthless, dispossessed spirits. Uh, they even managed to cause some paralysis in the process while they're out here taking hits. Uh, one of them died actually by being repelled, which is interesting. Um, given that repel deals untyped damage, it doesn't check for ethereal, which means that ethereal units can kill themselves if they're fighting someone with a weapon with longer range. Um, and my crossbows or my crossbow bolts flying overhead do occasionally cause a bit of friendly fire, but for the most part they cause much more damage to the opponents, which is what's important. Um, so I lose my Dispossessed Spirits and five regular Ghosts, but I do take a relatively difficult province, so that's cool. Uh, here I lose some more Ghosts. Um, this is the Combined Expansion Party with the two Centaurians. Um, two Centaurians means two Fear Auras, which means that this province is... Uh, yeah, even though it's not the easiest province, it's also not the hardest, it's just like, you know, Militia and Heavy Infantry and so on. Um, and I've got these overlapping Fear Auras, so that's causing some morale penalties here, as you can see. And yeah, these guys are eventually going to run away. I do lose a bunch of ghosts from the fighting, and I even have my ghost squads route because they are not mindless. Um, but my centurions have a high enough HP that they can stay in the fight and eventually route the rest of them. Um, so this is kind of a bad event. It means I've got to deal with uh, enemy dominion stuff, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. Um, I don't need the dominion, so having some heresy in there is fine. Um, and I'll be getting actual income from this province as long as my own dominion doesn't spread. So one nice thing about Lemuria in general is that all of its stuff is fast moving. So these guys are map move 3, these guys are map move 3, um, these guys are floating, which means that they can um, just go over uh, f otherwise difficult provinces like forests just fine. And of course everything is amphibious so they can go over uh, thawed rivers. So um, they're going to be going over here to pick up additional um, crossbowmen which I'm recruiting over here, yep, and then um, they can from there either go back to the capital to get reinforcements uh, or group up over here to get reinforcements depending on what's going on. This guy's gonna go over here to build a temple on this fortress, which um, honestly I should have sent some guy over there to do that ahead of time because you need temples in all of your forts to get free spawn, but I've been a little bit preoccupied with um, using my mages as actual mages instead. Uh, my pretender is starting site searching. So I first had her uh, bring all these ghosts up north so that the centurion here could actually use them. Um, right now he's set to hold an attack so that he is not going to draw the wolf tribe aggro. Uh, given that wolf tribe has dual wielders, um, they're quite dangerous even for uh, an ethereal high protection guy like this guy. So given that he's already taken some afflictions, um, I definitely want him behind the ghosts so that they can draw the initial aggro. Uh, and then meanwhile, the pretender can just site search while she's, uh, after having brought the troops up, given that I needed her to be doing that anyway, so I can start finding gems. Uh, I'm already very big, by the way. Uh, it's only turn 9, and I am huge. Micklin seems to be doing quite well, but his capital's over here. So that's kind of awkward. I uh, honestly expected his capital to be over here somewhere. Um, and that means that my taking this Lizard Shaman province means that even with a temple there, uh, like, I'm going to need to put a temple there in order to recruit the Lizard Shamans. Um, so that's going to be putting a Lemurian temple next to a living player, which is sometimes a reason to go to war against Lemuria. So, yeah, that's not really good at all from a diplomatic perspective. Um, but for now, he seems content with not going to war against me. Um, so I'm going to relish the peace for as long as it lasts. Uh, Micklin has expanded, or Marignon has expanded up over here, so we know that he occupies this little section, um, and we know that Agartha occupies this little section, although we don't know how far he goes across the bridge there or anything. Joman expanded down south, so again, all of my neighbors have, um, I mean, none of them have been like, you know, let's all be super great friends forever and so on, but they haven't, like, attacked me right away, which is something that you can expect or at least worry about when you're playing Lemuria. So... So far, so good on the diplomatic front, even while I am getting absolutely massive. 
And on turn 10, Micklin has surprisingly agreed to give me the swamp and allow me to recruit lizard shamans there. Um, so this is a huge boon for me because it means I can potentially avoid fighting Micklin for now, and I definitely do want this lizard shaman province. Um, it's a little bit unusual in that normal people want to go out of their way to avoid having Lemuria getting temples on their border, um, but Micklin here seems okay to allow it just in order to maintain peace. Um, so a little bit passive from him. Um, Agartha has actually agreed to help me fight Marignon, um, which is great. I basically do want to get him on board in large part to get him to not attack me while um, I fight Marignon, who I expect to be fairly weak and small early based on uh, what I've seen from his borders. Uh, we do find some magic sites. So the first one is Starlit Pond. This is just an astral magic site, but it's still nice because all gems are useful. And then here we find the Silver Sarcophagus. Um, so this is a site which gives death and astral income, so also nice. Um, and then, as you can see, we already have another deadland here. So our death gem, gem income is going up. Uh, here in the King's Tomb Desert, uh, we're able to expand just fine into the Wolf Tribe province. So we'll go ahead and check out that battle. Wolf Tribe is potentially dangerous on account of their number of attacks, so they have a higher chance of going through the ethereal. And because my guys... Um, don't have protection, any attacks that do go through the ethereal are likely to do damage, so a large number of low damage attacks are still very threatening. However, they're also length 0, which means that they're more likely to be repelled. Given that these guys have length 4 weapons and a decent attack score, they're able to avoid some of the attacks just by repelling them and stabbing them back instead. Uh, given that these guys have lower than average magic resistance because they're just tribal indies, um, they actually do take damage from my weapons fairly regularly, so I'm able to route them quite quickly, get up to the archers, and then get rid of them. The vine arrows that this guy's launching are magical, so they're always going to be doing damage when they hit my troops. Um, but the shaman is eventually exhausted, and then, yeah, we lose only uh, five ghosts, in one of which uh, we lose five of our actual combat ghosts, and then one does a dispossessed spirit. Uh, here in the Cracked Earth, we take the province losslessly, and this is just on account of the crossbows. So I have my crossbows set to fire archers, the idea being that the indie commanders, because they're following stay-behind troops, are going to stay behind the archer squadron, which is going to be in the back. Uh, that means that all the crossbow bolts which are fired at the archers have a chance of hitting the indie commanders, and therefore causing them to rout. So we see we pinged one right over there. Uh, we tagged another one there. And then the indie commanders get... Uh, scared, and then once they run away, all of the other troops are going to follow suit. So that makes this an extremely easy province to take, and we don't even lose any of the ghosts in the process. It wasn't a particularly hard province, though, because the uh, militias were liable to rout regardless. Here in the Old Land, we lose a couple of our mercenaries, which is no problem, but we do lose our apparitions, and this was actually a placement error. So the apparitions here are providing a fear aura, which I like. Um, they also, however, provide this disease aura, so that's actually going to be diseasing my mercenaries. Luckily, they're just mercenaries, and I don't plan on keeping them around for too long, but you can see here that these guys are all getting sick. Uh, however, the apparitions actually run to the front because the squad is set to fire. These guys definitely don't have any ranged attacks, and because these uh, mercenaries were set in line formation, the apparitions get in front of them, and then they get killed. So that kind of sucks. However, once it's just ghosts and mercenaries in combat with the wolf tribe, uh, in part because of the higher length of their weapons, uh, I'm able to get rid of these guys very easily. So that worked out pretty well. And then here in the old land... Oh, yep, that was it. Uh, so we do get some events. So Bad Omens is kind of a crappy event for Lemoria just because it increases the misfortune and therefore increases the chance of more bad events, and it decreases the chance of the free gem and gold events that I quite like. Uh, here I get some free province defense, so not a huge deal, but can be nice. And then here we have uh, a Dominion reduction, which actually does matter for Lemoria. I do dislike that. L the Dominion uh, in here wasn't particularly high, and it does spread back over here, um, but still kind of just annoying. Uh, I'm continuing to expand over here. We have plenty of ghosts, so no problem. I should have actually brought that Dispossessed Spirit over, but I just didn't bother with it. Uh, over here, we're basically just going to try to take this province to see if we can. I am rebidding the mercenaries, but I'm not particularly confident that we're going to take this province, and if we don't, then actually get the money back because the mercenaries are dead and not capable of being rebid. Uh, this guy over here is bringing up um, all of the ghosts from my capital to then take on the Lizard Shaman province, and because this province has uh, cheap indie crossbows, I'm going to be uh, building a couple of those as well. 
my scout is going to ping this throne province set to retreat, and if the province is easy to take, I'm actually going to capture it and then give it to Miklin for free with no PD. The idea being that after I take this province, um, if it really is just what it says it is, then my ghost should have no problem capturing it losslessly uh, or with very few losses, and then I can get some goodwill with Miklin. I can see here that these provinces are Indy, so we know that Marignon has to be very small. Um, additionally, we can see here that he has an Indy commander over here and potentially some stuff over here, so I expect that he's building some forts. And we did actually see a commander here for quite some time, which means that um, we can expect that this fort is well underway. So I want to attack Marignon soon so that I can bust the fort before it finishes. Uh, this province over here, because it also has these cheap crossbows, is also going to be getting a couple of those built. And I'm going to be building uh, an additional fortress right over here. Uh, Jomin, meanwhile, is uh, seems to be content to not fight me and is just expanding over here. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with these commanders, because that's a large number of Indy commanders, and I don't think he's building that many forts. Um, over here, we see that Agartha is also building a fortress right over here on our border, but I definitely don't want to pick an early fight with Agartha uh, if I can avoid it. Um, and we'll... Uh, yeah, we'll be bringing him along, hopefully, with our war on Marignon as well. And that's the turn. This is turn 11. Um, we've stopped producing additional Centurions, and we're instead going towards Mage Production, so I get another Lemur Acolyte. Uh, as far as expansion goes, these guys lose, which isn't too surprising, um, because, you know, they are fighting heavy cavalry, and it's just a bunch of diseased uh, mercenaries with a very small number of ghosts, and the one uh, H3 Lemur Centurion Prophet. Or, um, he, because of his unequaled obesity, has additional hit points, and he gets even more from uh, his being a prophet, and a little bit more from the undying from um, my pretender's death bless. So he is at least fairly tanky, but I'm not, I'm really just not willing to risk him in combat. Uh, these guys over here actually do walk around the heavy cavalry front line and kill one of the commanders. Um, that's not a huge deal because they don't kill all of the commanders, so they don't actually get them to rout. And um, if they had been staying to fight the heavy cavalry that had been attacking at the front, then we could have potentially reduced this number further. But still, with only three, the province is at least a little bit weakened. And if I can have my prophet reanimate up um, a couple more apparitions and then a front line, I should be able to clear it out. Uh, even just these heavy infantry here are actually quite difficult to take on just because of their very high protection and just the fact that there's almost 20 of them. Um, but if I am able to use fear or to route them, then I don't actually need to kill them. So I'm just going to get some apparitions, uh, some ghosts, maybe some free spawn um, dispossessed spirits, and then use those to take the province. Uh, here, my ghosts expand fine. Um, not too much trouble here, and it's just the fact that I have uh, a large-ish number of ghosts. And uh, with the Summon buffs, they have no problems fighting Indies. They do kind of split off the two groups, which each square off at, against their own party instead of all focusing on the one and then going against the other. And a couple do die from the banishment here. Um, however, once it comes to the combat, uh, my guys do very well. These guys here, um, while they are very tanky, are not particularly threatening offensively, um, just on account of the fact that... A, Broadsword is length 2, these guys are length 4, so they're not actually any more threatening than the um, light infantry here with their spears, uh, because any hit that hits my guys is potentially going to kill them anyways, uh, so I'm not super worried about the um, uh, slightly increased damage from the broadsword. Uh, and then, yeah, there's relatively few of them, so they don't fare well against the ghosts. Uh, here in Gertug, I am scouting the province, and I see that it has some spellcasters. So if I actually did want to go for the throne, uh, these indie mages wouldn't really stop me. Um, like, this guy here isn't going to cast anything threatening, basically. This guy here can summon some size 6 water elementals and maybe a size 3 fire elemental, but again, that's not super threatening. Um, and then this guy here can skelly spam, uh, potentially shadow blast, or summon imps using these blood slaves. Um, but because the province is at least relatively difficult, with almost 30 heavy infantry to guard these mages, um, I don't want to uh, devote the resources to take it, uh, so I'm just going to let Miklin handle that. Uh, here I get some insect swarms. This is just a very minor bad event. I lose a little bit of gold, which hurts Lemuria maybe a little bit worse than nations that have decent gold income, but it's not a huge deal. Um, and then here I get a very good event. Uh, so. The amount of money that I paid for these is almost negligible, and you get 13 elite heavy infantry 
Uh, these guys have magic weapons, very high protection, decent magic resistance, and morale. Love these guys. Um, so they are going to make an excellent front line. Um, I'm going to be very happy to have these guys along. Uh, and this guy over here is a trampler. Because he has morale 50, he's never going to route, which means he can uh, function as a solo trampler. Um, but he is rather squishy with almost no defense, relatively low protection, um, and horrifically low magic resistance. Um, so he is potentially, or I'm hoping that he's going to, you know, do some trampling, get some damage in, and uh, survive. But if he does die, then I'm not going to be super worried regardless. Uh, as you can see here, I am launching my attack on Marignan. Um, I'm hoping to be able to break the, these two fortresses. Um, this one in particular, I think, is actually finishing this turn. If he's actually playing correctly, he might move um, some priests or mages or both inside here to build a lab or a temple. Um, or both, uh, which means that I can potentially cause even more economic damage by stopping those from being built as well. So assuming that these attacks go successfully and I'm right, that's 2,500 gold of economic damage, or up to even 2,900 gold if he's building a lab and temple here. Uh, if he's building just a lab, it's 2,500. If he's building neither, it's still 2,000, which is still huge. And more importantly, it's going to set him very far behind in terms of his... Um, additional infrastructure because he probably wouldn't have been building fortresses elsewhere as well. And given that we see that he's got these two provinces still Indy, even with excellent scales, this would be a major blow to Marignan, which will set him very far behind. I'm hoping that by attacking now I can keep him on the back foot to allow uh, what's actually a really poor early game army of essentially just Indy troops and a couple spectral frontliners to be able to take on an actual nation. Um, I'm hoping to hit or to take on this war early, basically to fight him before he can get out flaming arrows and fire elementals. Um, because once he does, I'm not really going to be able to win a conventional fight. And I'm also going to be hopefully having the element of surprise on my side. So by attacking him early, hitting him hard, I can potentially just roll over him and take over his land before um, he can actually have the research to be able to respond more effectively. Um, and this is definitely not something that Lamoria can normally do um, unless they're left alone by everyone else, but given the fact that uh, Micklin at least is content to leave me alone completely, and the fact that Agartha might actually be on board with fighting Marignan, um, this is basically the best chance I have in order to win an early game war, which Lemore is almost never allowed to do. Uh, so in over here I'm moving this guy over here to build a temple. Um, so I'm not going to make the same mistake that I made with this fortress, I'm actually going to have my temple up ahead of time. And having extra temples is always nice if you can afford it, just because it helps spread your dominion to get more of those nice ghosts. Um, and while it does depopulate the provinces, at least I'll be getting uh, additional gems from the Deadlands once my dominion spreads over here and kills off these provinces as well. Um, and yeah, that is the turn. This is turn 12, and my invasion of Marignan has begun. Um, Micklin has responded to my uh, offer to take the throne by saying, you know, yes, that would be awesome. Um, but given that I did scout it and see that it has significant defenders, um, I'm going to need to respond and be like, actually, I'm sorry, it looks like it's a little bit too hard. Um, but, you know, hopefully he's not going to be too disappointed in that. Um, Agartha is still on board with fighting Marignan. I told him that I'm attacking him now, and hopefully Mari or I was hoping at the time that Agartha would be able to join in as well. I find some magic sites, which is awesome, so this is yet more death gem income. And then here, uh, I find yet another death site. So uh, this one increases death ritual range. That's not super useful most of the time, but it does have one niche use in that it's going to increase the range of Stygian paths. So if I find myself going for a throne rush at the end, what I might wind up doing is using Stygian paths to have a Grand Lemur bring over a huge army of ghosts to instantly breach a fortress, while also teleporting or cloud trapezing additional Grand Lemurs uh, for further mage support. So by doing that, if I can um, increase the range of my Stygian paths from here, and it's already a very long range spell, I can um, potentially move, or move an army through the magic phase even further away. So as far as Marignan goes, I see that he has a bunch of guys over here in his capital, and I see that he has um, a bunch of guys over here as well. So a couple of things could happen. He could attack into here with this group of crossbowmen, pikeneers, and archers. Uh, given the composition of the army, uh, it's most likely going to be comprised of a significant number of pikeneer of um, crossbowmen, which are potentially dangerous. But the second most highest, or the second uh, highest number of troops is going to be the Pikineers, and you can see from the little thing over here that it's not a huge difference between those. 
So in this province right over here, I'm going to have uh, 19 crossbowmen of my own, which I hope is going to be enough to match his crossbows. Um, additionally, I'm going to have uh, my spectral frontline, which I think is going to be a little bit better at soaking crossbow fire than uh, his own guys. And I'm going to have this guy with a fear aura and tough skin for increased protection. So with 22 protection, he's liable to uh, survive a shot from a crossbow, even if it does go through his etherealness. And then because I, my province defense includes Lemur Centurions as well, I have another tanky ethereal fear or a guy um, who's going to be able to group up with my crossbows and ghosts and so on uh, to fend off this attack. So I think I can actually t uh, hold this province if he attacks into it. If instead he moves these guys up over here, I think that I can take this province with the combined armies because this is going to be more crossbows than he has. I'm still going to have a Fear Aura guy here, and I'm going to have this combined front line of both the Meteorite Guards and the Spectral Velites. Uh, so I expect this to um, succeed as well. Um, so yeah, um, I, let me actually... Uh, I'll get back to my future plans in a second just so I can go over the... Um, battles that we did see. So here we see um, Atlantis expanding with a mercenary company. There's not much to see here other than noting that these Pikineers um, are excellent because of their high length weapons. Um, so this is another example of Repel being useful to win a fight. Um, while their attack, defense, and protection and so on are all very normal and unimpressive, um, even with an ethereal star. And while these guys actually do have theoretically much better protection, when it comes to actually fighting, these guys are fighting with Link 2 weapons against Link 6 weapons, which means that many of their attacks are getting repelled. And that's why the Pikineers are able to beat the numerically superior and uh, even slightly more heavily armored infantry that they're going up against. Uh, here in the Eagle Reach Mountains, this is just a bunch of ghosts fighting um, the Crossbow and Cavalry Province, which I'd seen right over here. However, there aren't very many of the um, enemy guys. In the initial lance charge, these guys have three attacks, some of which actually do land, uh, so he's able to kill a couple of ghosts in the process. But while their um, Morning Stars and Hoofs are relatively high damage, they are also fairly low length, and they don't have any special property against the Ethereal. Um, from my guys, so they're able to hold them off long enough to rout the cavalry, and then once those guys are gone, the uh, crossbows are not particularly threatening against the shielded ethereal infantry, and then once they get into melee range, they're able to dispatch these guys relatively quickly as well. They actually manage to hold up for, uh, very well in terms of their morale checks, but once the commanders go down, of course, the uh, ghosts win. Here, I actually do lose the Shambler Thrall capturing this province from Marignon. Uh, he very arrogantly didn't increase the province defense here, even though I'm quite sure, given that it's a solo commander, that he was building a fortress here. Um, and he admitted after the game that he was. Uh, just the commanders are able to kill this thrall. Uh, they were able to make the defense checks against its trample. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but I'm at least avoiding paying upkeep on the 20 gold dude. Here in Sinkhole Swamp, I'm able to take on the lizards um, without too much trouble. The indie crossbows that I recruited do help. There's only a couple of them here, but, you know, uh, some always helps. And these guys, because they have uh, no shields and relatively low protection, are actually quite susceptible to missile fire. And, yeah, you can see there they get kind of devastated. Uh, I do lose a couple of the ghosts just because, uh, as I mentioned last time when uh, fighting lizards, they are very effective offensively. But uh, after a couple rounds of combat, they do fail their morale checks uh, and they get routed. Uh, here, I lose a couple of ghosts taking on this province, um, and here Marignon actually uh, did invest in some province defense, and he even recruited a bunch of these indie archers. I'm not 100% sure what he's recruiting them for, but given that he otherwise has only his capital for a fortress, he's probably just trying to supplement his expansion parties a bit. Uh, my guys were set to fire archers here as well, with the same idea as when they're firing archers against... Um, indies in that they're going to at least uh, have a chance of taking on the province defense commander um, and potentially take on the commanders that uh, Marignon actually recruited as well. Uh, here my uh, Lemur Centurion was able to get to the front lines and help route the infantry. So while I did lose six ghosts in the process, I kill four archers and significantly more than that in province defense, and more importantly, I break the fort. Because he has a royal navigator here, I actually expect that he broke a temple or a uh, laboratory as well. It's possible that the royal navigator was sight searching, but given that my math had the fort finishing on this turn, it would make sense for him to build the lab this turn just in order to prevent... Um, 
or in order to give him an extra turn of mage recruitment. So that is, I expect, a huge gold swing, and between the two, 2,500 gold. So massive uh, swing in my favor. Marignan is very far behind from that. Uh, here I get a couple free gems for an event, so always nice, but not particularly important. Here my scout is discovered, but this is just the capital province defense. Uh, any province defense over 15 provides a chance for sneaky units to be discovered, and my sneaky scout gets found out. Luckily he's able to run away, um, and also luckily I have a um, province bordering Marignon's capital since I took the caverns here. So he's able to live and continue sneaking about and serving as a scout. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, I'm going to be uh, moving over here with both of these armies, and the combined force has both a relatively strong front line, largely from the meteorite guards, um, as well as all these crossbows. My mercenary group, because this guy is sailing, is able to go all the way over to this province right over here. I actually am not expecting it to be well defended, because it's on the far side of um, Marignon's capital, so unless he got a province defense event, or was just you know, feeling very flighty, it's likely that this attack's going to succeed, unless he has a scout here and is able to see that I have the sailing mercenary group. Even so, he might want to um, not spend the resources to defend this province in order to defend his capital. Um, and if it does go poorly, the mercenaries that I've lost are not particularly threatening as combat troops. Um, but yeah, over here I'm going to continue recruiting indie crossbows because this guy's got, uh, this province has seven resource crossbows as well, which is awesome. So I can bring over this commander, and while he can't lead the ghosts, he can at least bring over the crossbows which I was able to recruit from this fort, and I'm going to be able to combine them with the ghosts from my capital, uh, led by one of my Lemur Centurions. So over here I'm going to have yet more crossbows, and the Lemur Centurion can take all of them, and the commander can go back to the fort to continue basically ferrying crossbows up to over here, uh, so that they can be led over here into fighting Marignon. Over here I'm going to be continuing to get apparitions. I think that I'll want to get at least six, and then also a front line of um, at least five guys before taking on this uh, heavy infantry and heavy cavalry province again, just so that I can be confident that the fear ores are going to be able to get rid of them, since otherwise I'll have lost uh, several turns of reanimation. Um, over here I see that Joman has crystal sorceresses in this province. So these are very awesome mages. They would be worth going to war over if I were not already at war with Marignon. Um, so once I finish fighting Marignon, if I am not attacked by anyone else, I'm going to want to go to war with Joman soon. Uh, he's definitely going to be next up on my targeting list. Uh, these guys over here are going to start sight searching. Um, They're going to be bringing over the guys from over here as well. The idea being that as they search in this region over here, moving over towards Marignon, they can actually lead the uh, free spawn dispossessed spirits and the winter wolves over here um, to basically open up uh, an additional attack ve uh, vector on Marignon using the um, dispossessed spirit free spawn and the wolves that this guy was summoning. Uh, so that's potentially cool. And then I finished taking over these two provinces over here, so these guys can all come back. Uh, this guy is going to bring his guys over here uh, and sync up with the additional indie crossbows over here and then move up over into here so that I have um, basically additional guys over here to uh, continue attacking Marignon from the north. This guy, meanwhile, is going to then take on this province right over here using his guys and potentially any dispossessed spirits from this province right over here. Uh, Marignon... Uh, yeah, took a very nasty blow, and he's already started asking for help from the other nations in the thread, although so far, um, only uh, Atlantis has even um, responded to him, so we'll uh, see how things go from there. 